Hey, I'm Heather Baxter. Thanks so much for joining today. I want to talk to you today about a topic called victim mentality. This is a tough topic and I just kind of want to make it short and sweet because I want you to grab onto a couple key points. Trust me, my number one passion is to inspire you and motivate you towards your dreams and goals with our focus on our faith. I can tell you that I was victimized so much from my past. Trust me, that is why and how Run was published last year. There were several years of writing this, and it was so awesome that I was able to say at the end, or even in the beginning of writing this, I would not have been able to write this if I was not even set free from my past. So I just want to talk to you about that because if your past is victimizing you, it is stopping you from those big dreams and goals and gifts that God has tucked down inside of you. So again, I want to encourage you to run the race that God has marked out for you. And if you're in a place right now saying, I can't run. I feel so stuck because my past is victimizing me. Are you in that place? Are you in that place where those past memories you wish you could erase? Maybe there's a choice that you wish you could go back and, and just make that decision again and not make that choice. If that makes any sense, if we could just kind of rewind back to the past and redo that day, we would make everything different. Well, we can't do that. What's done is done. And many times we keep that mentality of what's done is done. My life is over. There's no hope. I will be rejected. God doesn't have a plan. I feel so unworthy. And that tape just plays over and over in our mind. And that is not where I want you to be. I want you to push stop on that tape right now. I want you to know that the choices that you made, we're going to learn how to forget about that. We're going to learn how to move forward. I want you to know that there's, there were decisions in your past that were poor. I know for me, there were many decisions that I made that were extremely poor. And they haunted me. And all I could do was pretend that they didn't happen. Honestly, I was really good at opening up a drawer tucking all those bad decisions, all those bad choices, and all those past memories, I would tuck in a few, few drawers and I would shut them. The only thing that would open those drawers were things that were triggered in my memory. And that is when I would fall again. And I'd get back up, jam them back in the drawer again, shove the drawer shut until something else in life would trigger the memories and the drawer would back, open back up. This happened over and over and over, and it had such a controlling effect on me. It, it really, I want to use the word, almost demoralized me. I felt like I was not going to ever be the wife I needed to be, be the mom that I needed to be. And then all the ambition and, and the motivation and the dreams that I felt were inside of me, as I was beginning to learn to walk a little bit, I felt still that I had to keep all of this a secret and tuck it away in some drawers because I felt if it was exposed, I would be rejected again by those that love me. So it was something that controlled me mentally. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody out there, but if you, if you are understanding this and you are saying, you know, Heather, I do. I have some past memories. I have some choices that I wish I didn't make. I wish I could just forget about them. I have some decisions that were really poor. I'm talking to you today. I want you to know that God has a marked race for you and he wants you to get running. We need to get past the obstacle of victim mentality. So all I want to do in today's message is kind of just share with you a few ways that you can push past this roadblock in your life. Because the last thing we want to do is let our issues and our scars and our wounds control us. Remember what I said a few seconds ago. We need to push stop on that cassette tape, on those old memories. We need to know in the Bible that it says, behold, God says, behold. Now the word behold means kind of time out. Wait a second. Do you realize I want to do a new thing in your life? Behold means stop, grab onto it. Move forward in what I have. Realize this. 
And so many times we just kind of push that idea aside because we don't feel worthy enough. We feel like, well, her mistake or her choice wasn't as bad as mine. My memory is a little worse. I am definitely not worthy. God loves you. You are worthy. There's not one bigger than the other. God doesn't do the measuring trick. We do that. And so I'm here to tell you today that those issues, those scars, those, those wounds, we are not going to move forward in them. If we stopped push on that cassette tape, I mean, I'm sorry, if we, stopped, if we pushed stop on that cassette tape, then what we're going to do is stop right now and behold the idea that God wants to do a new thing. He wants to make a way in our wilderness. He wants to do something new. So how do we go after that? How do we realize that God wants to crown you with joy and greatness? He wants to give you a double portion for all those black ashes. He wants to say, hey, I have a great thing I'm going to do in your life, but you keep carrying around those black ashes and I can't work through that. And so sometimes we become the biggest obstacle. Our mind becomes the biggest obstacle. And so again, we said that we are pushing stop on that cassette tape. So I'm hoping that that little phrase goes over and over in your mind when this video is long gone. I'm hoping that you just hear, I'm pushing stop today on that cassette tape. I'm pushing stop today on that cassette tape. Sometimes we just have to take control over what the enemy is trying to ruin in our life. Listen, God has a plan and he wants you to run after it. We do not need to be stuck in that victim mentality. So how do we do this? How do we take that shame and guilt that is holding us back from the calling that we have? What are a few couple steps that we can take? Now, I know for the longest time, I was really afraid to move forward with anybody because I, again, was afraid of rejection. I was afraid of being exposed. I was afraid of some of the choices and the past mistakes that I made. Uh, in, the, in the decisions that I just wish I could go back and erase, I was afraid of those coming out from under the rug. And I share that again in this run book. I share a lot of my story there. And how, you know what's amazing? Is God knows who to bring in your life that has crossed the same path as you, has dealt with some of the same trauma, and he knows where to position them to get you to run the race that he has called out for you. And that's why I have such a strong desire to constantly scatter seeds through amazing things called social media, which is Instagram and, and Snapchat and, and right now the YouTube channel, wherever I can, because sometimes that's the first place that you're going to be open to community is alone by yourself just listening to a message. Because therefore, you are not um, feeling vulnerable in front of anybody. And that was me for a long time. And you know, back then, there wasn't so, no social media. There wasn't a place where I could go and listen. There was just somebody maybe God placed in the line at the grocery store. Maybe somebody that God placed in my work environment that just nudged me to come to a couple community groups or just be open to the idea. And so I remember back when I was kind of first beginning to walk, I want to say I actually stood, not even running yet, but I just stood up a little bit and I was curious and I love that. I love when you can be curious a little bit. I knew God wanted a new thing in my life. I was convinced because a friend kept telling me and telling me that, you know, God's got a plan for you. What are you thinking? And again, I wasn't even letting her know some of my past. I was like, okay, you're convincing me a little, but you know that drawer that I was talking about? Mm, I don't want to tell her what's in my drawer. That's the type of thing that I had going on. But God is so good because when I began, I remember one of my first Bible studies um, way back, I did something called Forgiven and Set Free, and I did it on my own. And let me tell you, when you begin to read God's word or listen, it says that faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. God begins to do something miraculously in your life. There's no rhyme or reason to that. There is something called the Holy Spirit who is able to comfort you, teach you, train you, and push you, and move you into that relationship. And that, that is the relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not a religion. I learned it's about a relationship. And that Jesus loved me for who I was. He did not look at my guilt. I mean, he did not look at my past mistakes, my, my past um, choices. He did not um, look at them and condemn me. Instead, he was saying, hey, I want to make an exchange here. I don't want you to carry that shame and that guilt anymore, Heather. I'm going to 
put a new desire, a new dream, a new vision in your life, and you are going to feel it. And I'll tell you what, I did. It motivated me to get running. God has a way of taking that stuff away, that junk away. But we have to be open to just give him a little, open to listen, open to go try something new, open to just, um, you know what, here's a great start. And I'm not throwing my book, any book, but quietly open the book and run and begin to just explore what God's word has for you. Go on a little adventure. He will take over from there. That is a good way today to stop that cassette tape from playing those past choices and those past mistakes. And so three things that I learned that I learned in my beginning race, I want to say in mile run, one, I really learned that anybody can show up at the starting line, that God could use me. I was a qualified runner. I may not have showed up in the best clothes and, and looked like I knew how to run, but you know what? I was allowed to show up. God said, you can come to the start line. And I showed up to the start line. I did something little. I began to read. And you know, I began to read about forgiveness. And that was such a great place for me because, listen, God forgives the past mistakes. He forgives those past choices. He forgives those poor decisions. Not only does he forgive, he erases. We are the ones that hold on to them. We are the ones that torment ourselves with those past choices. And God's saying, hand that over. So if you're here with me today and you're in that place, are you in that place saying, I got to hand over that affair. I got to hand over that abortion. I've got to hand over that bad choice that I made over here. I need to hand it over to God. And you begin to understand what forgiveness looks like, what that exchange looks like. That was a season for me. And I'll tell you, that season set me free. The next thing I began to do was open up each one of those drawers. And I began to take everything that I was holding in denial that I didn't want relief from. Because I felt my relief came from really honestly controlling it by sticking it in the drawer. So I learned to open those drawers up and face that past mistake. Look at that poor choice. And as I begin to do that, God began to help me make the exchange and erase those where they don't come up as tormenting anymore. I look at it now as God has exchanged all that shame and that guilt, and he has crowned me with a double portion. And Isaiah 61 talks to us about that. I'm encouraging you, go and read Isaiah 61 today. If you're identifying with this message at all, I started off for one of the first times in Isaiah 61. And I loved it because in that verse it says, God does not look at the shame of your youth. That spoke to me. God doesn't look at the shame. He's not here to condemn me of the poor choices that I made in my youth. He's here to crown me with a double portion. He has a calling on my life. He has gifts that he's given me. He has a dream. He has visions. He sees me as an incredible wife. He sees me as an incredible mom. He sees me having beautiful children. He sees me, sees me living life abundantly. My mentality, my victim mentality would not allow me to see any of that. So again, there needs to be an exchange, there, but, but there needs to be a commitment. You need to show up at the start line. Begin to learn. Mile one, two, three. Learn to run in such a way. And when you learn to run in such a way, you are set free. And so the last thing I want to share is when you're set free, you learn to run with like kind of like a palms up living. Palms up living. You're releasing that memory. You're releasing that past poor choice. You're releasing the decisions that you wish you never made. You're releasing that to God. And there's something amazing that happens there. But you got to get running. So I'm hoping this video encouraged you. Um, if it does, please join my YouTube channel where I'm there on a daily basis, there to inspire you towards success, to help you, to motivate you towards your dreams and goals. But we do that with a faith-based focus. So go ahead, subscribe to my channel, push notifications on your phone. We've got all these little charms now that'll let you know when I post it. Follow me on all of the other social media networks because I am here to motivate you towards your dreams. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in day 18. I gave you the key when the door wasn't open. Just admit it. See, I gave you faith, turned your doubt into hope.
kid tonight